it's the Mad Queen. Welcome to my lair, the Queen's Lair. I'm really excited to share my first of many tier lists for Eternal Evolution with you guys. I have every single hero in the game, so I've been able to do a lot of testing with each of these heroes, and I wanted to make sure I had a really good understanding behind the game and these heroes before I recommended them to anyone. I have personally watched videos where people are recommending heroes and making tier lists when they don't understand the game yet and they don't really have the basic knowledge behind these heroes. In return, it's made me lose time, resources, and sometimes money. Honestly, a lot of money, unfortunately, I hate to admit. I like to take into consideration a few different things when I make these tier lists. First is, what kind of utility are they going to be able to provide to a team? How many teams can they be put in and actually be good? What kind of gear requirements they need? Because if they need super crazy in-game gear and stats to be really good, they're not a triple S hero in my opinion. So without any more babbling, let's go ahead and jump into it. I put Guan Yu in the B tier. He has a lot of potential. Unfortunately, I think they tried to put too much into his kit. So instead of him being really good at one or two things, he's really kind of average or a little below average on doing most of those things. Next, I have Zaida. She could also be placed under the supports as well because she has a lot of utility. She's able to provide shields to her whole team and whenever that disappears, it heals. She has crowd control effects. She's able to also sustain and take a lot of damage. Crete, as we all know, is incredible. I love my Crete. I use him all the time. He is a total monster, able to do a decent amount of damage, has crowd control, able to sustain a lot of damage as well. Leo is able to reduce the amount of damage that he takes from enemies. He's able to increase his overall damage over time. He's able to rush his enemies. And he's also able to help provide some control to his team as well while doing damage. He is overall a very, very good hero. Next up, I'm going on to the supports and I have Anruda. I hope that's how you say it. Anruda, Anruda is one of those heroes I had a hard time with. He is an exceptional hero and an exceptional support. The only thing is you are going to have to put a lot of resources into him for him to actually be good. He's going to have to have all of his abilities totally maxed out before he is super, super good in the game. That's not entirely what we're looking for for general use for the average player. So for that reason, I did put him in the A tier. He could be much higher if you didn't have to put so many resources into him. Rez is an S plus tier hero. He's super easy to get a lot of copies of. Very free to play friendly, easy to build out. He's able to give his team extra energy while taking energy from the enemies, boosting attack speed. He's just a really, really good hero that has a lot of utility throughout the game. Maserani is another S plus tier hero that's a support. He also has a lot in his kit. Healing, boosting attack, decreasing incoming damage, and he also applies shield to the whole team as well. I have Prigger in the B tier. Prigger has the ability to be in the S tier. Unfortunately, for that to happen, she has to have extremely in-game gear on or she needs to be paired with Morami. Next, I have Morami. I put her in the A tier. She has a little bit more utility than Prigger does. She's able to help one of her allies and she can also do a decent amount of damage as well. Morami is not one of the top damage dealers in the game. She is able to do some damage though and to help out her ally. Nautilus is a really strong damage dealer. He unfortunately only does damage to one hero at a time. That is not what made me put him in the S tier. In PvP, generally, he's a really excellent hero. 
with Skewer and Hattie, I have very mixed, very mixed feelings and really a mixed opinion about them. A lot of people like to place them in the S plus tier. I cannot do that. And that's because Skewer and Hattie are out of all of the triple S heroes, the hardest to gear. They need the most stats out of any of these heroes to be viable and do really well in the places that they excel. And this unit is going to be more of an in-game unit. There's two of them, so you don't have to focus on only one, but focus on two of them because if one hero dies, the other one dies as well. They are really amazing. They're just not amazing for the average player. So for that reason, I did not place them in the S plus tier. I've placed Ravina in the S tier. If she were to be able to do more damage in PvP content, I would place her in the S plus tier. She really excels in PvE content and she does okay on the PvP side of things. She just isn't super amazing there. Although she might not be the best choice for Arena, she still is a good choice to use there. Next is Azina. I also put her in the S tier. Azina has a lot of potential. I wish more people would talk about her. She is super easy to build, which is one of the reasons I place her so high. She has some really crazy potential as far as her overall damage output. She's very usable in a lot of places within the game overall. So that's why I placed her in the S tier. Bailey Hudson, of course, he's an S plus tier hero. He, he is insane. If you don't have him, I'm so sorry for you. I actually did not get him until probably a month or a month and a half into the game. I did not do a bunch of research into who I should be picking or choosing in the beginning of the game. I wanted to really figure that stuff out on my own, and I learned the hard way. I do have mine immortal now. Bailey has a lot of utility, and he has a lot of potential damage output as well. Emma is also in the S plus tier. She is super easy to build because she doesn't need crit rate and she doesn't need crit damage. She also has bombs that she's able to place, and overall, she does a lot of damage. Next is Luke. He's the same as Emma, except he's able to do a lot of AoE damage. He's super easy to build, and you can use him everywhere in the game for the most part. Of course, a lot of these damage dealers aren't going to be used in the Terror Dome, but generally they can be used almost everywhere else. As I said in the beginning of the video, this is just my first of many tier lists. I'm also going to be putting in the description a link so that you can access this quickly if you want to. I'm also going to be coming out with a lot more of these tier lists and I'm going to be covering almost everywhere in the game. Plus, I'm going to be making all of these for beginners as well. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything you would like to add, or if you have something specific you would like to see me do, leave a comment in the description. I would love to read what you guys have to say. Also, if you're a new player or an experienced player, join my Discord. It's a great place for beginners to ask for advice and experienced players to share advice. The link will be in the description. This video was brought to you in collaboration with Eternal Evolution. Download the game for free now in the iOS or Google Play Store. You can also use my personal game download code in the video description to show some support. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.